as you move towards the end of the year, it will only get better. Amen. Your health will get better. Amen. Your spiritual work will get better. Amen. Your marriage will get better. Amen. Your finance will get better. Amen. The rest of you will get better. Amen. Your career will get better. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. I receive it. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please, you may have your seat. Right. Glory to God. Can we turn our Bibles to Amos chapter 6? And this morning, I'm talking to you about experiencing clarity, encounters, and breakthroughs through prayer and fasting. Experiencing clarity, breakthroughs through prayer and fasting. Let's get into the word. Amos chapter 6 verse 1. Amos chapter 6 verse 1. All right. Experiencing clarity encounters and breakthroughs through prayer and fasting. I bumped into a video of um, Bishop Oedipo's son, Isaac Oedipo, Pastor Isaac Oedipo. And um, he was sharing a story, and this is a very powerful story. He was pastoring in the U.S. and he got really sick, really sick that it could lead to death. And um, he had this huge diagnosis in his health and all of those kind of things. Then he, he went on to describe how he actually got, how he recovered. But the first thing he said was what taught me the most. He said, because I come from a family where we take responsibility, he said, I did not know how to accept what I got. And one of the things I want to say is this, is what destroys people is not life or what happens to you. What destroys people is a concept called lent helplessness. What is lent helplessness? When you gradually, because of all you've experienced, look at your life and do nothing because you've taught yourself that you're helpless. It's called lent helplessness. I, I know people that come to church and don't try again. Uh, yeah, they don't try again. They, they, they pray, they don't try again. It's called lent helplessness. Lent helplessness. I, I, have you not seen people that are so sick and you won't take them to the hospital and they refuse to go to the hospital? I'll give another story. My aunt, my mom's sister came to stay with us. She's passed on right now. And you know, when she came to stay with us, she just told me that She's not feeling wine because I just said, just come and rest with us. She's not feeling fine. That's okay. You know what? There's a pharmacy just across the road. Let's walk there. Let's see if they give you a prescription. So as I go to the pharmacy, somebody just told me, let's do our blood pressure. We did our blood pressure. I kid you not. Our blood pressure was out of range. The, the pharmacy said, I'd take her to the hospital now. This is not pharmacy. We got, to the, we got to the hospital and I think one of this hospital close by and it was 240 over something. The doctor said, she should be dead right now. He said, if she dies, nothing is wrong. Then, they were treating and all those things. Next thing, she'll be on admission. Then my auntie just went, no, I'm not going to be on admission. No, I'm not going to be on admission. Because they had charged us a lot of money. I took her to a very, to a very good hospital. I said, no, no, no. How can I come and stay with you? And you're paying so much for me. I just came to, you know, stay with you. And you know, I said, I'm the one paying. He said, it doesn't matter. You know, then, then, I, I said, but, you know, then the doctor said, that, do you want to die? Then she looked at the doctor and said, I'm not afraid of death. He said, I'm not afraid of death. He said, I've seen my children's children. He said, all my other sisters, including his mother, I'm older than them when they died. He said, so don't scare me with death. If I die now, I'm not a child. Even me that brought her to her. Then I learned something. That because of what you've been through, you can learn helplessness. Where you become helpless about going forward. Length helplessness. So a lot of people are here. Your marriage had troubles, but now you're not even doing anything to improve it. Some people are here. There are steps you can take to improve your finance. There are steps you can take to improve your life. You've just helpless. And you've gone to this take, you know, case Sarah, Sarah, that whatever will be, will be. Length helplessness. You say, if, 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 if I want to, if someone marry me, mm, you don't marry, mm, what it, whatever will be, will be. I can't come and kill myself. But what you must know is this.
every true change starts from you taking responsibility the reason why people don't take responsibility is this one of the reasons is this they become emotionally exhausted that's what happens but if you want to experience change you must rise above your emotional exhaustion i know you've lost money i know life has been tough and you felt as if i've tried and tried and tried and that's not work but you must rise be above it let me tell you something if you think everybody prays because they feel like praying you're a joker everybody that prays here will have experienced this emotional exhaustion at one point or you be like god you know i'm tired when you want to do it do it if you don't want to do it don't do it but me i'll stop praying but the thing is this so everybody gets there it's not only you it's not only you that gets it but for you to have a breakthrough you must rise above that that's what i'm going to you must rise above that every deeper dimension every deep every deeper dimension every breakthrough is going to require you to take responsibility maybe you've run a business at a certain level you want to go to another level you are going to have to take responsibility maybe you want to change your marital situation you are going to have to take responsibility you're just gonna to have to say that enough is enough listen this is okay it's the next level I'm going to stop having this story that I peddle of my exhaustion, of my discouragement. Look, look at what the Bible says. Amos chapter 6 verse 1. Oh my God. Look at him and say, take responsibility. Amos chapter 6 verse 1. The Bible says this. He said, woe to them that at ease in Zion. What does that mean? There are people that fold their legs and will not take responsibility. The Bible says they are cursed. You must take responsibility. Give me the message translation. This is very powerful. Take responsibility. Doctor says that maybe you have fibro. Don't just break down. Take responsibility. Someone says you'll not get married. Don't just back down. Take responsibility. Don't see this generation loves the word. I'm depressed. I'm stressed. That's how it is. Listen to me. Don't behave as if your emotions control you. You control your emotion. Take responsibility. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. I said, Glory to God. Amen. See what it says in Amos chapter 6, verse 1. He said, What to them, what to you will think you live on easy street in Zion? Faith doesn't make things easy, it makes them achievable. Oh my God. I, 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 I'm not sure if you heard it. The teaching of faith does not say that faith makes things easy. Faith makes things what? Achievable. And sometimes achievable is tough. Take responsibility. You have been here financially for a long time. Take responsibility, sir. Everything that works is worked at. Things don't happen by chance. Look at Genesis chapter 27 verse 40. Take responsibility. I know that you've been broken in your emotions. I know you've lost money. I know you're struggling. But it's time to what? Take responsibility and say, I need to get up. Look at it. Let's just get I want to go. And by the sword shall thou leave and shall save thy brother. And it shall come to pass that when dominion, thou shalt break the yoke of thy neck. Look at the message translation. This is very powerful. Message translation. He says, you will live by your sword. He says, you will live hand to mouth. You will serve your brother. But when you can't, Kylo Prata, he says, when you can't take it anymore. That's the point. The point is that you can still take it. Someone says, hey, you know, I'm not a prayer person. They play they play the reason why you are not a prayer person you have not found what will make you pray when you find what will make you pray you will be surprised how much you are a prayer warrior have you not seen people you say you know have you ever tried to pick up a lovely lady beautiful classy lady before and you you probably pick her up and she needs to walk to the car and you're in a hurry because you didn't pack well and she just goes oh yeah you know and you're like oh, oh like 
Last man, I said, it's okay. Man. You know, you know why? I said, no, no, I don't know how to run or walk fast. The reason why is that she has not found any reason to walk fast or run. If you just tell her she sat on your car, there's a snake under your leg. See, if you think, I can't pray. You have not found the reason. So pray. Huh? He says, when you can't take it anymore. Uh-uh. You, you can still take it, that's the problem. That's why most people, change happens when they are pushed to the wall. Look at the next slide. He said, when you can't take it anymore, you will break what? Loose and run free. The reason why God stops people from helping you and disappoints you is that God doesn't want to take it anymore. Are you here? What you call disappointment is this. God knows if they keep helping you, you will not develop muscles to fight over yourself. So God prevents them from helping you so that you can look up to him. Are you here somebody? Are you here, somebody? Yes, Take your responsibility. So you look at your finance, it's at one level. You look at this at one level. Question, what are you going to take responsibility? I mean, look at the story I gave right now. He could have said, well, this is diagnosed with the doctor and that's it. Take responsibility. In fact, in life, you don't become what your potential is. That's why I don't believe in potentials. I saw say, huh? A lot of people had potentials and they never met them. The reason why is that your potential is not a reflection of your future. Your level of responsibility shows your future. How many of you have cars here and your car speedometer is up to like 220, right? Some people is 180, then there's 200, then there's what? 220 and there's 240. Then very fast cars have 260. Question, how many of you here have given your cars beyond 200? Raise up your hands. Beyond 200. Anybody here? Look at that. It's not as if your car cannot go beyond 200. That is the potential of your car. But is the driver, is the personal capacity, responsibility of the driver that determines how far the car will go. My question is, this is my question. You have so much potential. How far you go will depend on how much you take responsibility. You can complain to tomorrow. Complaining changes nothing. What changes anything is taking responsibility. Accepting the demand of what it takes to produce a change. What's taking responsibility? Accepting the demand of what it takes to produce a change and giving yourself to it. Oh wow. When you stop trying, your life stops moving. Once you stop trying, your life stops. The reason why I'm saying so is that people always say, ah, the year is over. How is it over? It's over because you said it is over. It's over because you stopped trying. If you start now, the year will become a new year again. Yes, glory to God. Hallelujah. I say glory to God. Hallelujah. I say glory to God. Hallelujah. I say glory to God. Take responsibility. How do you take responsibility? The, in this teaching, you take responsibility by prayer and fasting. Spiritual responsibility now. You take responsibility by prayer. You, you say, this cannot continue like this. by prayer and fasting I've cried enough I've complained enough I've gotten angry but it's time to what? take responsibility look at the prodigal son the prodigal son he was eating with beggars until he arose and came to himself Nothing. the Bible says and the prodigal son came to himself he told himself something You can come to church till next year. If you don't take responsibility, nothing will change. You can keep pointing at other people. Point at the, see, 
do you have a blame list? Some people have a blame list. Why is your life like this? My parents, you know, the way they raised me. Then my boyfriend that broke my heart when I was 25. Then my teacher that didn't believe in me. Then they will blame the school that didn't give them a third class. Then they will blame everybody. Listen to me. Have you noticed something? On your blame list, there's one common denominator. What is it? You. Stop blaming. Take responsibility. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Take responsibility. How, how do you take responsibility? Through prayers. If this must change, you know, give, give me those chairs. Give me that chair again. This is a problem with life. Just give me one chair. Just one chair at a time first. Then you bring the rest. This is a problem with life. This is your life. When you were a child, this is your life. You know what happened when you were a child? Should I just come here? You need to come first. This is your life. And this is what, what happens. As a, as a child, you don't do anything for yourself. You don't feed. You don't care. You don't do. Your parents take care. So your parents use you to take care of your life. And your life begins to move forward. Two years old. Three years old. Four years old. Five years old. Six years old. Seven. Then at a point, your parents withdraw. Then you have your life. You have to move yourself forward. But the point of life is that it's not just your life. Then life begins to compound. So you, you, finally when you were a child, your major problem was what to eat. Then you grow up. What's life? Rent. Uh-huh. Grow up, go up, go up. Or nothing. What? Marriage. Yeah. Bring it again. What else? School fees. Now you have to pay masters. I mean school fees. Yeah, school fees. Job, job, bring job. Bring what happens? And you, you are still now life is tough to push. The reason why you think life is tough is this. All your life as a child, someone push for you. It's time for you to push your own life by taking responsibility. Are, are you listening to me? Instead of you to take responsibility, some of you are pushing and looking for someone. You live your life, you are looking for someone to help you push your life. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. And that's why intentionally God allows them to disappoint you. Because as long as you push, they help you push. You will never have the strength to push by yourself. So the person that should give you capital fails you in capital. So that wisdom can produce capital for you. Are you here? Take responsibility for your life. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. So how do you take responsibility? We're talking about taking responsibility spiritually by fasting and praying. What does prayer do? What does prayer do? Let, let, let's start with that. You know, in the first service, I spoke about prayer enforces prophecy. And you can go back and watch that. But I want to look at another, another place. What prayer does is that prayer makes people willing. Bring my chairs, bring the game. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1. Bring the game, the game, the game. Yeah. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1. He says, 2 Corinthians chapter, you give me verse 13, I said verse 1. If you can't play chess, stay away. Yeah. Second Corinthians chapter 1. Nobody can play chess. Sun is coming. That's great. Just sit down. Second Corinthians chapter 8 verse 1. It said, moreover, we do you to with of the grace of God beside the on the church of Macedonia. Look at verse 2. It says, how in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto rich Riches of the liberty. Verse 3. This is what I'm going to. For to their power, I bear record. And beyond their power, they were willing of themselves to do what? To do what? Continue. They were willing of themselves. And let me stop there. See, everybody look at me. Human beings are the primary methods and channel that God will use to bless you. Do you agree with me? But the challenge with human beings is that they need to be willing to help you. So what happened is that in the game of life, oh, 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 okay, they, they didn't arrange it well, you're rearranging it. Thank you, rearrange it for me. <laughs> but be faster now. So let me share another scripture. Psalm 1 and 10, verse 3. Psalm 1 and 10, verse 3. Oh, glory to God. Psalm 1 and 10, verse 3. 
Let's check together. I want to go. It says, let's let's together. I want to go. It says, thy people shall be what? Willing in the day of what? Question. Why are people unwilling to help you? Because power is not available. People don't help like that. It's power that compels them to help. So, when they say, I just remembered you, it was not just remembrance. Spiritual buttons were touched. The response to the spiritual party was them helping you. He says, thy people shall be willing. So, when you saw in 2 Corinthians 8, where the Bible says, they gave, Bible says they were poor people, oh, but they gave beyond their poverty. poverty the reason why they gave that way was because power had been touched the people that need to move for you all they need is a touch of power and they will move what you must know is that when God wants to move this is why we pray life is like chess please sir I need the I need I need the I need the coin to move yes I need the coin to move you need to take microphone Oh, this is why you pray. This is why you pray, and this is why you stay in prayer. Yeah. Hold the microphone. Hold the microphone. The queen, the queen cannot move like this. And if this is the queen, right? Yes, they can't move. The queen cannot move. Yes. So moves. move other things that can make the queen move. You have to grace this way to move. That's it. When you start praying and your prayer not seems to work, it's because your prayer is creating space. Yeah. <laughs> You are the one, the, the reason why is that the queen, the queen needs to move. But it can't move like that. So, other things must move for this to move. The husband, the husband you are praying for is in the wrong relationship. My God, so If only you understand what I'm talking about. So therefore, the girlfriend must misbehave for him to come out. I want to ask you, what happened to Vasti? Many of you don't know Vasti. Vasti was the queen that who? Esther took her place. The Bible says one day, the queen said, the, the king said, he said, call my wife, let me just show them how beautiful my wife was. And for some reason, this girl just said, no, I'm not coming. No, I'm not coming. The king say they play. <laughs> Just like that, she was deposed as a queen. Are you hearing me? But the reason why was because some people have been praying that Ezra will rise. So says, how can you say this? The Bible says that when Esther kept quiet, Nehemiah told Esther, who knows if you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this, it was not coincidence, it was orchestration. It was not what coincidence, it was what orchestration. No, no, don't, don't play beyond me, don't play beyond me. Praise God. Do you know what happened also? Before that time, they were going to dip, there was a coup to remove the king. Mordecai was the one that reported the coup, but they forgot Mordecai. That forgetting Mordecai was intentional. Because if they remember that time, they would have not rewarded him fully. But question, how did the king get to remember Mordecai? As they stayed in fasting and praying, the Bible says the king could not sleep. The king has the best bed. He has all it takes to sleep. But the work of angelic spirits, they had begun to disturb him. Is what prayer does. I, brother, pray, play, play. We need to get play for them. Yeah, yeah. Wait, so how would the king coin, coin, want the coin to move now? There's space now. Yeah. So, so let, let it move now. It can, you need to use the microphone. I don't know why you're talking about this. this is the the yes, it, can, it can only move, move here. Yes, no. So we've created space, but the queen can only move with what? Two steps forward. One, two. That's why it can stay. Until more space is created, the queen cannot move. So from this place now, yeah, from this place now the, queen the queen can go they this are way. Gonna, they are gonna... The problem is that you want to go everywhere, but you have not created space in the spirits. Yeah. 
Are you here somebody? Are you here somebody? What does prayer do? It makes people's heart willing. Go back to that verse. So, prayer begins to work on rearrangement. Prayer begins to work on rearrangement. This is what prayer does. This rearrangement. Everything is looking confusing. It's to you that looks confusing. You know, if you, if you don't play chess, everything looks like something nonsense to you. But to those that are playing, every step is calculated. When you look to the eye of a human, you're like, this doesn't make sense. But to a professional, this makes perfect sense. Who? So, you know, let me give a testimony. A lady followed her friend for a job interview. Her friend said, you have a car, I don't have a car. Drop me now. After I dress up, I don't want to take in all these taxis and all of those things. He says, it just started to, to, to dress up. So eventually, no, it's okay, you can go, thank you. You know, eventually, eventually, he went to drop her. And I said, will you wait for me? He said, oh yeah, I'll wait for you. So she started in the reception. She went for the interview. The interview, one of the interviewers came and entered. And looked, oh, are you here for the interview? He said, no, my friend. He said, oh, that's great. Because the other people said, but you are not here, so that's fine. So as the friend came out, as the friend came out, just leave it, thank you. As the friend came out, the friend came out, thank you, just the microphone, okay. Thanks. As a friend came out, they were going to go. Then the guy said, but you also, you look like someone within the injury for this job. Why are the consultant doing this interview? He said, do you have a job? He said, no, that's why I brought her down. I'm jobless. <laughs> so she did the job, did the interview. Long and short. The girl that took someone there, they took her. The girl that went for the interview, they didn't take her. The reason why is this, eh? the, girl that, the girl that got the interview, that was not her job. But she needs to be a vehicle to make the person's job know that this is your job. That's what the Bible says. Read again. It says, thy people shall be willing. In the day of what? Question, what produces power? James chapter 5. Yeah. What produces power? James chapter 5. James chapter 5. Hey, my pray, pray in the spirit one minute. Just pray in the spirit one minute. Pray in the spirit one minute. Like a man on cross tele prediata. Baba shokele mendros ke vreke tele roske vele brota nangras ke zose vreke di. In Jesus' name. James chapter 5 verse 16. The amplified version, please. The amplified version. James chapter 5 verse 16. Oh my God. Because this is the gap this is the gap the problem this is the gap the gap is that contract the chairman needs to be willing you're the guy you want to marry the mother needs to be willing the approving body needs to be willing but willingness is a function of power willingness does not answer to grammar willingness is not just about persuasion and negotiation willingness is a function of power see what the bible says Confess your faults one to another and pray and, and pray for one another that you may be healed and restored. And restored, I'm just jumping, and restored to a spiritual tone of mind and heart. See what it says. The earnest prayer of a righteous man makes what? It says, makes tremendous power available that is dynamic. That means if you want to contain it, it will turn. The power is dynamic and it's working. As we are praying, God is playing chess. <laughs> it, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you here? It, it will take the MD moving here. It will take the girlfriend move out here. It will take the mother move out here. It will take this move out here. And, and, but the thing is that you don't know he's playing. He but we are praying because the power is directed as we pray. That's why I say, if you are not praying, they play. I'm telling you, you now wonder ah, why was it so easy? Because prayers have gone ahead of you. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. There was a time in my life, for a long time in my life, for a time in my life, I was praying 10 hours every day. 10 hours every day. Yeah. I have people that knew. All they, all they knew was that every time they came to see me, I was praying. 10 hours every day. I remember one time before my mom passed on, we were talking 
and she was just talking about me. He said, it's only God that knows why your life is so easy like this. He said, it's the easiest of all my children. And I smiled. I said, the investment in prayer, you think was a waste of time? We prayed into the future and cleared the pathway. You are using makeup, leading this. You can't provide a marriage. They play. <laughs> they play. Okay, maybe it's maybe K that will give you a husband. They play. As a businessman, you now do document. Yeah, yeah. You now call your PM. Hello, Tony. Is it ready? File XB2, file 3. I don't want any mistakes. I, listen, when we get to NMPC, I don't want any, They play. Your mates have gone to see Baba in Oshobu. They sample their forehead, sample their bottles. Put, they've given them incision from the back to the tail. You, you are here speaking grammar. They play. Recently, <laughs> one guy that runs an oil company, they kidnapped his workers. He contacted me. <laughs> you know when they kidnap someone and they call the pastor? What, what do you call me to do? I'm not a security agent. <laughs> he said, Pastor, the word is in your mouth, sir. He said, I said, what do they want? He said, they want $500,000 to release my staff. I said, call me. I said, call me tomorrow. I'll tell you what the Lord says. I called him tomorrow. I said, you will pay. You will not pay that much. But nobody will die. They will all come out. And I said, this is how it will be. I said, you don't pay that much, you pay. I told him, just a fraction. Was, and this is how it be. He called me three or four days after. He said, just as you said, we paid a fraction. It was nothing compared. And they're all released. The reason why is that life answers to power, not grammar. Life answers to. So when you say, see, when you say you cannot pray, I feel bad. Not that hey, you can pray. I feel bad. Hey, yeah. You know, as some people, some people have physical disadvantages, maybe their eyes or their legs. You are spiritually disadvantaged when you cannot pray. Prayerlessness is a disability. He says, in the day of the spirit, his people shall be willing. You don't understand? I've seen people go for interview before, and the person that wants to stand against them, as soon as you enter an interview, the person says, I feel like going to the toilet. By the time he comes back, they've concluded the job. He comes back and says, ah, what happened? But what produces power is prayer. What does prayer do? Willingness. People are just willing. There's a Yoruba word for you too. All of it are non yorubas You need to ask for a translation because I don't know the English word. You know, you have to actually, it's called Iyonwenio. What's the, what's the Igbo word for that? What's the Igbo word for that? You know, some things you'll buy just contained. I don't know how to... What's the English word for that? The closest is goodwill, but this is more than goodwill. You know, because it's more than goodwill. What? What's the Igbo word? You have it? What's the Igbo word for that? You do? What's it called? Tell me, what, what's the word? Oh, oh. You don't know? All oh, right. I thought your friend said you knew. Goodwill. This is why prayer is very important. It brings you the willingness. And that's why you must pray ahead a lot. So that before you get there, it's almost as if they've known you. It's almost as if they've known you. Everywhere I go, the goodwill of God follows me. Why? Prayer has gone ahead. So, you, oh my God. You don't understand. Goodwill works in mysterious ways. You just come and say, ah, you're going for an interview. You say, ah, you, what's your name? Josh. You're wearing my favorite color. Why did you wear that shirt that way? You don't know it's a prayer that influenced you to wear the shirts. You go for an interview. Your name is Williams. That's my father's name. Oh. And the person is just happily disposed. Why did you go to the interviewer that his name was Williams? Why did you go to the one that his name was Bosch? Because the prayer is directing them. And the prayer will make them notice what will make them help you. The prayer directs... Oh, no. uh, but let, go let, let me explain to you this way. Are you ready? The Bible says, Mordecai had helped the king and sat in Waku for many years. They didn't remember him. But the night they prayed, the king could not sleep. Why was it that time they remembered him? The reason was that prayers had been offered. 
Willingness. Willingness. Some of you, the government needs to be willing towards you. The president needs to be willing towards you. The, 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 the embassy needs to be willing towards you. You pack document as if you're a professor, but what you need now is prayer. But instead of you to pray, you will not pray. You'll be eating shawarma. You're, you're, you're like Esau. Esau it's, ate it's his destiny. Esau ate his destiny. Do you know what your eating has done to your destiny? You've eaten it up. That's why you, you look at everything. The angels are working. They can't work for you. Now we have announced 21 days of fasting and prayer. Hey, hey, hey. If this is why everything keeps going like that. Won't you participate this time around? My God. My God. Won't you participate this time around and deny yourself? Look at Wednesday. Wednesday, all women gather. Thursday, all men gather. Either they are businessmen or they are bank MDs. It doesn't matter. Because the willingness of men. The willingness of men. All of you that are doing well. There's a willingness that you need. That your willingness will not fade with changing this decision. What does that mean? I feel bad for a CBN governor. Bad? Sometimes not bad. Just a change of government, it got into trouble. Look at Daniel. Three or four government presidents came. In all dispensation, he was favored. All go four government, he was favored. This, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Good will, good will, good will. Good will, sir. Good will, sir. They change the president, I like him, keep him there. They change him, I like him, keep him there. They change him, I like him, keep him there. They change him, I like him, keep him there. Until he died, he was relevant. But what does that? It says, the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous makes tremendous power available. What happens when you pray? Let me tell you this. When you pray, angelic activities are released. This is what happens though. Behind the scene, you don't see it all. And that's why I was using this. This was an illustration. What happens when you pray that? Angels begin to move people. You know what angels do? Angels are experts in bringing your thoughts to people's mind. Angels are what? Experts in bringing your thoughts. They will just put the thought there. They, they will think it's natural. It's not. An angel put the thoughts there. Look at Joseph. Mary got into trouble with Joseph. Who solved it? It was an angel. An angel appeared to Joseph and said, don't leave her. All of a sudden, Joseph became willing. There was already trouble. Oh. Joseph became willing. Joseph I said, I will cut you off. I will destroy you. I will do this. I will do this. I will, you know, angel just appeared. One just angelic appearance. Next thing, Mary, baby, I miss you. And Mary was the only one that was happening because angel had touched. You are talking too much. Let angel touch. This is your mother-in-law that's giving you issue. Just one touch from an angel. Inkechi, you are the best daughter-in-law I have in the world. Are you ready to pray? Stand on your feet, let us pray.